Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to repurpose this broken air compressor into a portable air tank, also known as an air pig. This little compressor is probably close to 10 years old and unfortunately has seen better days. I have already taken it apart and know the problem. The connecting rod for the piston has broken. First we'll start with disassembly, stripping down this to the bare tank so we know exactly what we have and how to go about it. Removing the four screws holding on the plastic motor and pump cover. Disassembly procedures will vary between air compressors and even if you have an old air tank you're reusing, you can use this tutorial as well. Remove the handle so the cover can be fully removed. Once that cover is flipped over, the on off switch and fuse needs to be disconnected. Both use a spade connector. Just to give you a quick peek inside, as you can see there are the contacts on the top of the cover. So here is the motor and piston pump. First is the cylinder walls for the piston pump. Some of it has already been disassembled as mentioned earlier as I was looking at how to repair the actual pump. Here you can see the pump or at least what's left of it. The four long Phillips screws holds on the head and there are seals in between the mating surfaces. To remove the steel line which supplies air to the tank from the pump, remove the line directly from the tank. If using an adjustable wrench, make sure it's a better quality tool with tighter jaws as they can flex and damage the hex on fasteners or fittings. Repair parts I have found to be quite limited. Most of these after they break are basically just a throwaway item. I probably could have sourced out a new pump, but this can be quite costly, especially since a new compressor is around $75 depending on the quality and your location. Here is the piston, and as you can see the casting has split on the connecting rod. Now for removing the motor assembly, there will be four Phillips screws which holds this onto the tank bracket. The disassembly process is very straightforward, no special tools are required, and most of these old components will be thrown away. I may save the motor for another project. Disconnect the wiring. There will be various Phillips screws for the wire retainers and ground. Remove the spade connectors on the pressure switch. And finally, the motor is fully removed. The rubber motor vibration dampers can also be removed from the bracket base. Now to remove all the air fittings, starting with the pressure switch. Removing these fittings can be somewhat of a puzzle. When certain fittings are rotated, they may interfere with other components on the tank. I will be reusing the old pressure relief valve. This is needed so we do not overpressurize the air tank, which can be a safety hazard. These valves do have a rating. This one is rated at 115 PSI and it's typically stamped on the side. Once that tank is pumped over 115 PSI, the spring-loaded valve will activate and release the excessive pressure. Various size wrenches will be required to remove the old fittings, and as long as they're in good condition, can be reused. I did need to purchase a few items, which you'll see further on in the video. Other parts I was able to clean up and reuse. Liquid thread sealant was used on some of the parts from factory. Some fittings were reworked over the years and had sealant called pipe dope. Considering we have three connections on the tank, the largest connection will have the lowest restriction and used for the main airline hookup. The other two connections are smaller and the same size. One will be used to pump up the tank and the other I would like to reuse for the regulator. Installing the Schrader valve also referred to as a sniffer valve, which you can find in your plumbing section at your local hardware store. This one also came with a cap that removes the inner valve. Instead of pipe dope, I will be using Teflon tape. I find it's nicer to use as you don't have a sticky mess afterwards. When looking at the fittings from the threaded side, wrap the Teflon tape two to three times in the clockwise direction. If you were to do this in a counterclockwise direction, the tape would unravel and not seal. After the wraps, break the tape, ensure it's not covering the hole, and install the fitting. Teflon tape serves two purposes. One is to help seal the threads, and the other is to provide lubrication, ensuring the fitting can be tightened 
therefore increasing the seal of the connection. I'll explain the type of pipe threads in a moment. Make sure the connection is tightened. Do not over tighten it as it can damage the threads on the fitting. I also needed to purchase a couple more fittings, one being a bushing, which reduces the size of a threaded hole, and the other is a hex nipple, basically having two male threaded ends. Now to do a quick mock-up of everything before applying Teflon tape, so I know exactly what I need and how everything sits. This will also allow me to determine which parts need to be connected first, so there is no interference during assembly. All the old pipe dope was cleaned off, I let the fitting soak in a wax and grease remover solvent overnight and then cleaned everything up with a brass wire brush. This can get a little confusing for thread types, so I'll try to explain this as easy as possible. The threading used on this compressor is a National Pipe Thread, or NPT for short. This is a US standard that uses a tapered thread. This is not to be confused with the Nominal Pipe Thread, or NPS for short, which uses a straight thread. When looking at the fitting, you will notice it is tapered, so we will need MIP or FIP fittings. MIP means Male Iron Pipe or Male International Pipe, and FIP means Female Iron Pipe or Female International Pipe. Once everything has been mocked up, here is what I'm left with. I will need to adjust the regulator slightly once the handle goes back into place. Now for the assembly, apply Teflon tape to each of the male fittings so the threads achieve a proper seal. Trying to use the least amount of connections as possible, this will reduce the chance of any leakage as well as reducing costs if you are having to purchase some of the parts. Again, only two to three wraps of Teflon tape is all that's needed. Any excess tape exposed to the outside of the fitting can be easily removed, which I'll show you towards the end of the video. The relief valve gets installed on the largest connection to ensure there is no restriction, which may delay its operation. When pumping up the tank, we can also monitor the gauges on the tank to determine its current pressure. Now for peeling off the excess tape. Once everything has been tightened down, find the end of the tape and peel away. The outer threads that are exposed should help cut off the tape on the outside so it's easily removable. The Teflon tape is much easier to clean up than compared to pipe dope. I had to replace the one quick disconnect fitting on the regulator as it wasn't closing, therefore not allowing the tank to pump up. Reinstall the handle. For a test, pump up the tank using an air compressor and then let it sit for about 10 minutes with pressure. Monitor the pressure gauge for any droppage, which would indicate a leak. A leak can be found using a spray bottle with a soap and water mix. Spray it onto the connections and watch for bubbling. To repair the leak, try to tighten the connection first. If that fails, disconnect the fitting, clean off the old Teflon tape, and inspect for any damage. Replace the fitting if required, or apply more Teflon tape and reinstall. Using the tire pump gauge as a reference, we have the correct reading on the tank gauge as well. Normally, this compressor was used for pumping up tires or any small projects. This is still great for filling up tires and I can control the flow when needed, say if I need to clean out a sunroof drain. Overall, the three pieces I needed to purchase was only about $10 and this saved me from purchasing a new mini air compressor. So, overall a $65 savings in the end. New videos are released every week, so be sure to stay up to date with my video schedule by hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget to leave a comment below letting me know what you think of my tutorial. Thank you for watching.